How are we doing today, guys? Awesome. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Perfect. Does anyone know who this guy is? Yeah. Okay. JFK. What do we know about him? Raise your hand. Yeah. He's the 35th president. 35th president. What else do we know about? Uh, he was very charismatic. Very charismatic. I love that word. Yeah. He was the youngest president. Youngest president ever elected. One more. Great oral speaker. Great oral speaker. And that's what we're going to get into in a couple minutes, all right? So, yeah, so this is President John F. Kennedy. He was elected in 1960. And although he was only president for three years before his assassination, he really did a lot for this country. So, so for John F. Kennedy, he's elected in 1960. Remember, this is at a time when we don't really... It's a really uncertain time with the Cold War. Remember, we learned about this already. The USSR versus the United States. Remember the atomic age also. What does the atomic age mean? Yeah. A lot of the atomic bomb threats going on. Atomic bomb, exactly. This is the idea of you know, mutually assured destruction. We already talked about this. If anything ever happens, if we declare war on Russia, they're going to drop bombs on us, as we are with them. So it's a really uncertain time with the Cold War in USSR. A lot of hostilities. At home, we're doing pretty well. Okay, After World War II, uh, we have a lot of uh, economic growth, the rise of industry, which gives, gives way to the middle class, the rise of the middle class. This whole idea of the American dream. You know, two kids, two cars, white picket fence, the, the whole leave the New York Times thing. But then civil rights as well. Is everyone equal at this time? No. no. There's still segregation. There are still Jim Crow laws. And that's something that President Kennedy really wanted to hit on during his term. To help allies. Let's make this a great country. Okay? And what we were saying earlier is that he was a great speaker. He could persuade people through his dialogue, through his speeches, and really get them motivated to be better people. All right? And that's what we're going to be looking at today. One of the things is, when he came into power, not power, when he was elected in 1961, his inaugural address became one of the most famous inaugural addresses in history because of this one simple line. I'm going to show you this line right now, okay? Oh, I'll show you. Be crazy. Don't worry. Can everyone see? Yeah. Okay. And this is from inaugural address on January 20th, 1961. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. And Sora started this message of, we can be better. We can make this country better. And that's what we're going to be working on today, is how speech, how dialogue can persuade someone to be better, particularly from his inaugural address. So what we're going to be doing is, you guys have your packets? Yeah. Everyone has them? So what you're going to do in groups of two or three, and we're going to move really fast, is you're going to read segments of John F. Kennedy's inaugural address. OK? On the other page, you can rip this off if you want to. Afterwards, you're going to be answering these questions, dealing with his speech, and how, what do you think it is? What do you think it means? Okay, so sort of bring it all together. If there's any unfamiliar words from his speech that you don't understand, just write them down at the bottom. Okay? Does anyone have any questions? No? no? Everyone's clear? Everyone knows what they're doing? All right, so we're going to take about five, six minutes, all right, in groups of two or three. You guys can work on this together, all right? And I'm going to come around and help you out, okay? All right, you guys can get started. So here's, some que here's the question. <laughs> we put our names on this, or it doesn't matter? Yeah, put your names on. How are we doing? Good? So really look at, look at the language that he uses. Alright, so what they did today, okay, speaks that was... Yeah. 
I'm over here. Is this close it enough? Get more over here. Okay. His inaugural address was on January 20th, 1961. So that's. Hey guys, as you read it, I want you to think about how his line. Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Try to think about how you can relate that to your own life. Okay? All right. Three goals, JFK versus the public stories. Future terms. Perfect. All right. Some of the things that he wants to accomplish. And you look at like this area right here, his big goals that he wants to accomplish. Do about another two, two minutes, and we're gonna uh, come back together and go over these questions together. All right. So if we're looking at like three goals, you would like, all right. So one is right here, but the three is taking. You might be able to find it in this area. What we can do, what we're going to do, we're going to increase cooperation. First sentence, so number three, look at the first sentence. What does it mean? What are some positives and what are some negatives? We means to abolish poverty and yet to we could also end human life. What is he thinking about? Think of the atomic age, A B. If you haven't gotten to number four yet, I'll take a look at that. That's a real focus for it. Done. All right, no, 30 seconds. Wrapping up. Okay, you're not finished, it's okay. We're going to go over this together. So, question number one, what day did JFK make his inaugural address? 
There you go, January 20th, 1961. Um, perfect. What are three goals that JFK wishes to accomplish during his term and future terms? Yeah. Uh, he wanted to put an end to segregation. End to segregation? Uh, regulation of worldwide weaponry. Worldwide uh, weaponry? Regulate, you know, the atomic bomb. And uh, one more. Anything else? Yeah. Prevent atomic war. I'm sorry? Prevent atomic war. Prevent atomic war. I like that, all right? We also say um, eradicate disease, promote education around the world. Uh, what else? Yeah, that's perfect. But, but mostly diplomacy. Let's not go to war. Let's talk it out, OK? Perfect. So what does JFK mean when he says, for man holds in his moral hand the power to abolish all forms of human poverty and all forms of human life? What does he kind of what does he mean? That man could help each other, but man could also destroy each other. I love it. Love it. Man can help each other, but man also has the power to destroy each other through atomic weaponry. Remember we were talking about mutually assured destruction last session? Perfect. And in your own opinion, do you think JFK, what do you think he means by calling on Americans to ask what they can do for their country? I believe that means that we have the power to shape our nation. Exactly. We have the power to shape our nation. Kennedy was specifically talking to the youth, the new generation. People that are about your age, maybe a little bit older, okay? He's saying we're a great country, but we're starting to get a little complacent. And complacency means we're getting a little stuck, all right? We can do a lot better. We have the power to help others we have the power to help other nations. So let's focus on nation building, promoting education, uh, uh, aeronautics. This is the time when, when uh, JFK said, you know what, let's go to the moon. We can do it. We are a great nation. And we do these things not because they're easy, but because they are difficult. So he's calling on the young generation to be better. And he'll eventually, we'll talk about this in future lessons, he starts the Peace Corps. All right, building nations abroad, building diplomacy, being a better person. Okay? Now, you have to think, and we only have about two more minutes. Kennedy was elected with about 50% votes. Okay? It was the closest election, election in history at that time. At the end of his speech, he had a 75% approval rating. People went, they got behind him. All right? Because it's a message of hope. He's hopeful for America. Okay? So, as we start on the 1960s, because his lesson, his inaugural address, kind of shifted the focus into this idea of the 1960s, all right? And we'll talk about this more. But I want you to think about this quote, okay? Ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And I want you to take that to heart, all right? Think about in your own life, how you can help your own country. And I want you to also think about this message as we go through the sections in the 1960s, okay? Does anyone have any questions? No questions? Awesome. Yeah? Um, was that one of the highest approval ratings for our president at around that time? Around the time after his his uh, inaugural address? Yeah. At the time it was, yeah. Um, George Bush, I think, after September 11th had like a 90% approval rating. So when three quarters of the nation approve of you, you're in a good spot, okay? Perfect, I love that question. So, for homework tonight, I want you to read sections one and two, all right, pages 327, 335, and define all the terms of both sections, okay? And if you haven't finished this packet, hold on to it. We're going to go over it again. We're going to finish it after that later, okay? Awesome. Okay. Thank you, everyone. You guys were great today.